Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How To's. Talk to you today about Integrated Management Site Administration, uh, or also known as ASA, or Avaya Site Administration, or DSA, or whatever. Um, <coughs> Avaya Site Administration is the key tool you will use to administer your PBX. You can also use tools like Procom Plus or Terranova, things like that, the older ones, but Avaya Site Administration um, comes with every PBX that you purchase if you purchased it through an authorized business, business partner or through Avaya. Um, but you can also get this through like Catalyst Telecom and things like that. So you call them up and tell them you want a copy of ASA. You can probably buy one. Um, essentially, what you need to do, and you can see mine's 5.2 because it's based on the PBX version I have. So the newer version you have will support everything underneath it. All right. So <laughs> let's get started. The menu bar, pretty typical of a menu bar. And I'm just going to go over key features, things I use a lot. All right. Uh, I may go through or may do a series on ASA and go through the specific items and talk about them and their, 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 the pros, the cons of them, and why I don't use them, why I use them, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, that's pretty, probably a good idea. That's what I'll do. Um, but I'm going to go through the key features and one big thing today, Jedi versus emulator. Okay, So let's talk about Jedi first. Graphically Enhanced Affinity Interface is what it stands for. And essentially what this is, it allows you to administer your system using a windowed environment or, you know, the typical change station 1000, you know, things like this. So I can double click and it gives me menu options that I can select to a, you know, uh, or if you, if I click on Lost group, it tells you down here, enter number between one through 19. So it's a little slower, but it's great for the, for the people who are used to using Windows types environments and not the emulator environments because it gives you tabs. Um, but I can, I can assure you and tell you that you're going to find your life much easier if you use an emulator, and I'll explain why. Now, there are some benefits to Jedi, and I'll talk about that at the end when I talk about the difference between Jedi versus emulator. All right? So some of the other options I use. Uh, da, 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 browse dial ranges. This is a big one. <clears throat> it allows me to see the dial plan in a graphical format, and this is actually nice because I can add a range here if I want, um, but it also shows you everything that's assigned to the different types. Now, understand DAC and FAC, feature access codes, dial access codes, they both work in the feature access codes table because obviously I have more than just two of my feature access codes. Uh, but this is how it's assigned in my dial plan, all right? Because DAC 300 through 399, that's for my trunks, and everything else, stars, are for my feature access codes. But it allows you to see the defined ranges you have or the ranges you have set up, all right? So that's kind of a handy feature. Browse stations. This allows me to browse different types of stations based on the type that I have in my system. comes out to a nice fancy report, and you can export that information. Yeah, handy, like I said. Here's another one. Browse unused ports, and you can see all the ports that are available for you to use that are sitting there waiting for you to program them into something. You can also export this list. You can print this list. Again, very, very handy uh, for you to, to know if you're, if you're the type of guy who or girl who likes to save their data and know what's available to them. If you're, if you're heavily managing your system and you're the only one doing it, that could be real handy to you to export that into Excel so you know what you have and... You know, keeps a tab on things. This is also another one. That's my cat. Say hi. Find unused extensions. Um, allows you to find anything that's unused or not used based on your dial plan. And you can start it here. And you can say enter 9100 or enter all the unused extensions. Find all. If you click on find all, <coughs> it's going to go in and say, here's what's available to you. Okay. And you can break it down. I can say, let's go to next. And you can see everything that's available to you in that range. Again, very handy. Here's another export. You can export a lot of this data uh, to CSV file formats and import those into Excel or import those into an access database or however you want to manage that data. Swap stations. This is a handy one, but since I use TTI a lot, uh, you can use this to swap a station without, without having to do too much in emulator. So let's go into advanced. I won't talk about these right now, uh, but the export data and import data. What's really cool about export data, it allows you to export, and it's a good number of items. Uh, AAR analysis, uh, hunk groups, stations, trunk groups, things like that. It allows you to export items out of the station and save it to something. And once you do that, you can go edit that information, and then you can import it. So it's like a mini provision. Provision? 
I'm losing my mind here. Uh, it's a mini ProVision because ProVision is a software tool that's made you know available to business partners and uh, basically Avaya because it's really really expensive and it's a subscription based tool and it's really used for people who are installing PBXs all day long. So you can you know you can modify everything. It's like modifying an offline PBX and then uploading it to a live system. So you don't have to do too much. You can just do some tweaking when you get on site. You don't have to do it by hand. But if you're really really good like me. <laughs> I, I program PBXs from scratch using an emulator and emulator alone, and I can do it under five and a half hours. I've, I've programmed an entire 1,000-seat uh, call center using an emulator and not using ProVision um, just because I have a methodology that I use in my head. I take a, a notepad, and I go through all these tasks to add everything, and I'm good to go. Um, but that's just me. Again, it, it's all dependent on what you do and the things you do, all right? But there you go. And I'll talk about the difference between Emulator and Jedi here in a minute. But you will see in all my videos, I use Emulator. And if you have Emulator or Jedi open, you can't run any other task because this is this is holding up a connection. As you can see here, it says busy. All right. So when I close this, it says idle and it's available to anything that I do. <laughs> Fault and performance. Very, very cool because you can monitor your alarms. You can set up majors, majors or minors, major minor alarm warnings. And you can have this do something like send it to a display message box, report it and send it to an email, like you can send it to a text message, so at something at verizonwireless.com. You can text people, uh, but there are tools out there that allow, like Alarm Track, uh, alarmtraq.com, allow you to, to have more knock styled alarming, but this gives you a nice feature if you have something, this is sitting on a machine that you're not doing anything with, and allows you to page yourself or email yourself if you have alarms that pop up kind of a nice uh, preventative or uh, proactive way of monitoring your alarms. Trunk analyzer, and as you can see, when you've never run one, it's going to say, would you like to run set up the trunk analyzer task now? So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, next. I'm going to run this now, but you can also schedule this if you wish. I don't know why this isn't radio buttons, but bad design flaw. Uh, but you can run this now, which I'm going to, and this goes and pulls all the data, and you can see it went really fast. And if you go into schedule, you can see it completed. Okay, really, really quickly. Uh, and if I click it again, it gives me the type of model that I want to see. So I want to see Erlang B and greater service. Eh, but you can say OK, and here you go. And it brings up your trunk group's information and gives you a recommendation. And if it if it checks how much activity is on it, it's going to say you may want to add more trunks, reduce trunks. But again, if you're a trunk expert and you want to analyze all your trunks and know what kind of traffic you're going to need to do for any type of high call volumes, you can go do that with this tool here. Processor occupancy, again, here's another task. I'm going to run it, keep all data, run now, next, next, finish. And it already went. So I'm going to say processor occupancy, I'm going to say OK. <coughs> and it gives you a graph of how your processor is doing. Mine's only hit 2%. <laughs> That's really, really good. Um, but you can see how your processor is doing to see if you, you need to upgrade your PBX from an 8300 to maybe an 8800 or something like that. All right. So call traffic, again, here's the total calls. Uh, as you can see, there's no calls because I haven't made any. But you, you run that task, and it sets up the data for you so you can get a high overview of what you have. System capacity. System capacity is a nice way to see if you were to go into emulator and display capacity, you have to page through everything. Well, here's another tool that allows you to export all of this so you know exactly, snapshot in time, what you have available to you, what your limit is, and how many you've used, and the percentage that you've used. And you can sort this based, you know, just clicking on usage, and it puts my top one at the top, which is 18% of my total subscribed ports. Right, and you can export this. So if I go to File and say Export, it allows you to export this data into a CSV file, and you can manage it there. All right, so it's kind of nice. Uh, audits. Here's another one. This is a nice tool to allow you to show you anything. I wish this list would get bigger. It's been like this for years, but it allows you to report on your site data and coverage paths and things like that. So I say OK. You can schedule this, but I'm just say once. It's busy because it's running now. And you can see it's completed. And I'm going to go in here and say audits. How did I do this? Oh, I forgot how to view it. I totally forgot how to do it. Probably because I don't have any history. Oh, here you go. Sorry. <laughs> when you run the audits, it t it gives it to you in the history. So it tells you remote coverage. Uh, coverage remote entry one is not used. So you can go remove it. And this is based on processor occupancy because everything you add 
the system has to remember and go process all the time. There's it's constant processing. So if you if you have a ton of stuff in here, if this list is huge, you might want to go ahead and clean in your PBX. Clean up your PBX. Time synchronization. You can sync your time to something, whether it be an online system or another system, you can do that here. You can set it to your computer. Hardware manager. So what's nice about hardware manager, it gives you a graphical view of your system and it allows you to right click on it and say properties and it tells you everything that's in here, the ports that are available, the description type, the firmware and hardware vintage, the code of the card, which is like the, the name of it. And it also allows you to display any port usage, errors and alarms. And I can say yes, and you can see it's empty. I can say the layout, how it looks like in the media gateway, my configuration, you know, any errors that are against it. That's really, really handy. And you can go up here and say filter and I can say V4 and you can see that's because my I don't have my CO trunk plugged in. So that's why this is here. But you can see, you can see everything graphically uh, on your hardware. Uh, announcements, I'll talk about that because that's a really cool tool. Uh, and the difference between tasks and tree is tree allows you to right click on a system and, and do the different items that you want to do, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this is kind of nice for you to edit your stuff, set your IP addresses, um, you know, different types of things that you want to do. So you can run these right here. You can say run now, schedule, and the properties of it. Okay. But play around if you have a lab system, uh, play around with these features and, and just get used to I mean, my thing is practice, practice, practice. I'm always a practicing engineer because I'm always checking out and looking at the new features and figuring them out how I can use them to my to benefit me or my company or you know, my customer, because um, they may be something in there that you can do like EC 500, which I'll talk about in another video. But as you can see here, this is a really cool tool. Now let's talk about emulator versus uh, Jedi. Jedi, graphically enhanced. Now, I can do the things like Display Station 1000, and I can click on the tabs, and I can look at the stuff. Uh, it's kind of boring gray. I don't care about that. Um, but again, I'm an old school guy who likes to use emulator. It's pretty. <laughs> Display Station 1000, and I can page through just by hitting page. But this is the view I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing this. I'm used to seeing emulator. It's just that's what I have been used to. How many times did I say used to? All right, I'll get over it. Uh, but here's here's the benefits. Uh, and I like I said, I use everything in emulator because it's fast. It's much faster. If I do list station, you can see I have to page through and then it's gone. Well, that's not too handy, especially if I want to export that. If I do a screenshot, it's just not manageable. It's not handy. Well, here's the benefit of doing listing, of listing items. So if I do list station, you can see it brings it out into a nice, like Excel-like format, all right? And it gives you everything that's in there in a list. That is extremely handy because I can go in here and I can export this data and send this to an Excel spreadsheet and I can manage it how I want. I can go filter if I want. Uh, and that, again, that's really, really handy. And that's the same thing with find unused extensions or browse stations. But this allows me to export this data very easily and very quickly into a CSV format and allows me to manage it in Excel or um, Access, Microsoft Access or even SQL if you want. But again, that, that's the biggest difference. Is that's the only thing I use Jedi for. All right, that's me. I use it for listing things and exporting it out to Excel spreadsheets. Otherwise, I use emulator for everything else. Um, I think I've gone on long enough with this. It's been about almost 15 minutes and that's kind of over the time I like to do, but ASA is huge. There's a lot to it. You can access the uh, manager guide for the version of, of ASA that you have, which is mine's 5.2. So check it out, uh, comment, rate, questions, anything you have. If you want to see something specific in ASA, like, uh, I don't know, generate call accounting or how to create a template let me know i'll do a specific video on that task only all right guys i appreciate you watching i appreciate all the great comments and suggestions um, this is a lot of fun to do i will keep doing them so watch for the next video and i will talk to you all later Bye bye